their potential interest and path to play college athletics, but those have been in the evenings, and many of you have not been able to attend because you're probably out of practice or otherwise busy. So what we decided to do was bring the session into the college festival in a way that um, we could uh, reach more students and you could get the information. But it is going to be a shorter presentation because of that. So um, there are actually three of us here to talk to you. I'm going to be talking kind of from the advising standpoint and from the finding the right fit college and logistical standpoint related to academics. And then we have two of our famous athletic coaches and leaders within our school who have a long history of helping place students in college athletics. So I'm going to actually let them talk first um, to give a little bit of their um, perspective in terms of many of you are in as early as 10th grade and thinking about what might lie ahead for you in terms of what would be important steps for you to take and then I'll walk you through some specific things as well. All right, um, real quick, and just kind of some of the things that I think come up most is can I play in college? Where can I play in college? And I think that's the first step that you're looking at is it is a long process, okay? Uh, one, finding out what level you can play at is the most important. All right, everybody watches ESPN or whatever it is, and you see your Dukes, your North Carolinas and basketball, and you see your Alabama and football, your Clemson. Um, but realistically, that's not just every level. That is a very small percentage of college athlete, athletes play at. Um, there's three different levels. There's Division I, Division II, and Division Three. And then there's also, that's NCAA, there's Division I NAIA, Division II NAIA, Division III NAIA. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities out there to play a college sport either on scholarship or if you want to continue to play at the Division three level. Um, so the biggest thing I always preach is, one, knowing your ability and what level you can play at. Okay? Everybody wants to play at the highest level, okay? but there's certain things that come with that. Uh, one is, are you a good fit? Would you receive athletic assistance or financial assistance to play at that? Would you have playing time? Or would you be over recruited every single year? Uh, these are all things you have to factor in. And at a young age, that's sometimes hard to say because you're looking at your pool, okay? You're looking at Holy Trinity, um, or you're looking at your district. You're gotta be looking at the entire country to know where you fit. Um, which brings me into really, uh, a lot of you are probably playing clubs, outside sources, not just playing in high school. Those are important. Big things that I always say are important is knowing when to be at the right spot, okay? That is key. Okay, um, recruiting season. When is your open season for your sport? When can coaches actively come watch you play? For basketball, it's during the most of the recruiting is done during the summertime. AU, okay, uh, circuits. That's when you're going to be most likely seen. If you pay a thousand dollars to go to a tournament in April and it's not open recruiting season, you're not going to see college coaches there. So you spent a thousand dollars to attend a camp, hoping to be recruited when they're not even allowed to recruit. So there's certain things that you can do on your end that will help that process. So one is knowing le what, what level you can play at. And I would tell you, put feelers out. That's always what we do is we'll put 15 to 20 feelers out at the division one level, division two level, division three level. Where are you getting your most contact back from? I, uh, your coaches, they should be asking, where do you see they fit? Okay, your AU coaches, your club coaches, your high school coach. That's important. So you want to have that relationship with your coach. If you don't have a good relationship with your coach, you're probably getting off on the wrong foot because they are going to vouch for you, so you need to make sure you're communicating with them. All right? Um, so with that being said, knowing what level you play at, when is the right time to be at certain events. Uh, sports have become a multi-million, billion-dollar industry. Of There's camps every weekend. Does that camp really the right place for me to spend, if I only have a, this much money to spend there, rather than being at a national tournament where four or 500 coaches might be in one weekend, all right? So those are the type of things you need to pay attention with. Um, the, also, the other part is creating your own list, OK? 
Okay, you can go on NCAA, you can go on NAI, and you can pull up every school at the Division I through Division III level. Okay, I will tell you one thing that I would say is find a school that you're interested in majoring. That's number one. Listen, you are all going to quit playing sports at some time. Okay, so you don't want to pick the school that is directly right where you want to go just because you want to play soccer or baseball there, but they don't have your major. Okay, so you need to make sure that you take the time to find the right fit. Okay, and that process I think starts now. Okay, yes, you might only be in ninth and tenth grade. You might be a senior. If you're a senior and you haven't started the process, you're probably going to be a little more stressed because it's got to happen faster. If you're in tenth grade and you've already started contacting those coaches, doing those type of things, you're a little bit of foot ahead, and you will be able to start establishing relationships with those programs that you might like. Okay. Then, as you get older, it becomes a little bit easier because then you can narrow down, do they have my major? Can I play here? Is it a good fit for me academically? Okay? Some kids don't do well in classes that are 1,500 students. Some classes, some schools, you're better off in a you know, more limited 20 people to a class environment, 30 people to a class environment. Those are things you need to factor in. Okay? Also, one of the other things that people make the biggest mistake is in college is Picking a school based on just a coach only, okay? Let's be realistic. Coaches change professions all the time, okay? Especially at the higher level. Division one, it's more likely that you could take a job somewhere else and you could be gone in a year. If you went to school there just because you liked the coach but you didn't like the academics or anything else about the school, there's a chance that coach might not be there, okay? So smaller schools your chances are that that coach will probably be there longer because they tend to stay in those positions longer. So you got to look at that. How long has the coach been there? Okay, has he been there 22 years? Well, if the coach has been there 22 years, he's probably not going anywhere. Has he been there a year? And then you look at his past history that it looks like he leaves every two, three years. He's probably looking for something else while, you're, you know, while he's recruiting you. Um, so a lot of that comes into play. Okay? Biggest thing I can honestly tell you is your start, and what I would tell you to start doing now is – Get to the websites. Pick out schools in each one of those regions. Um, make a highlight reel. Get with your coaches on stats, okay? Speak to your coach. Let's be honest. I have a better idea of what level my basketball players are at. I couldn't tell Coach Hooks what level his football players are at. He has a better understanding. Get with your coaches and say, Coach, where do you see me fitting if I was interested in playing college sports? Where should I play? What level would I be have the most interest, okay? You don't want to shoot and rejection sometimes hurt. If you throw out 50 Division One and nobody replies, you're probably going to be sitting there going, this may never happen. Well, that doesn't mean it may not happen there. It may be better that you've been recruited to Division Two level, okay, or the Division Three level. So with that in mind, you know, you really you got to do your job and you got to do your homework and you got to pay attention to what's going on. And that, I think that starts with knowing where you fit. So I want to walk through actually what you just said about the how to do your research and how to how to get information about different programs that might be a fit for you. And I've got some screenshots here of how you might do this. And I'll, I'm going to back up a minute. And one of the tools that you have available to you on Naviance is a search, a college search uh, mechanism. And when you are here on the home page and go to the colleges, it's hard to read, um, but you click on find your fit and then it would, yeah, if you can turn that off. Then you'll go here to advanced college search and you can actually put in exactly some of the things that Mr. Henderson was talking about. You can put in these different factors related to location, number of students, their admission selectivity, the athletics that they offer, you can actually put in different divisions, the majors that they offer, and at the end of the day, it would give you a list of here are some schools that fit that criteria. So that's part of step one of doing homework is kind of figuring out a wide net of schools that might fit your criteria. Um, that myopic, there's one college I'm interested in, is probably not the best uh, attitude to have going into this. It should be more here are the 20 or 30 schools that might be something to consider. Once you have identified some schools for that broader list, 
you would then um, start going to their individual athletic websites. And you can do that through Naviance as well. So you get to the athletic portion of your website and you'll often see this would list all the different sports they have and then other things you wanna look at, they have a recruit tab here. And if you are in a specific sport, you can actually pull up the roster of the students who are currently playing that sport. And I pulled this up because you might see a name on here that you might recognize that graduated last year. This is where Laura Bowes is playing beach volleyball. The, one of the things to look at when you're looking at a roster is you actually want to look at, most of them do include the height. And especially for certain sports, volleyball, basketball, et cetera, et cetera, that may be a factor in whether or not you would be a potential fit for being recruited at this school. The other thing you wanna look at is where the roster is in terms of how many seniors in your position. That means that if they're graduating, that position is going to be a position that they're recruiting for because they need to make sure that they're planning for the future. So looking at that is important. Um, and then position, and then um, it, many of them will have a link to a bio. So I pulled up Drew Nixon, um, and this is his bio for Embry-Riddle, and it talks a little bit about his athletic um, experiences in high school. And that's something that you can do for most sports. And sometimes if it's a time sport, like if it's swimming or running, it would be that you would be able to see what their time or record was in that particular sport. And that would help you know, well, am I close? Am I past that? It would help you know if that's a potential fit for you. So these bios can be really helpful. The other piece of this, and this is something that Coach Henderson um, and I talked about a long time ago, is if you look at the schedule of this, the school in terms of what other colleges are playing that, that college that you're interested in. Because if you're interested in one college within that um, conference, another college within that conference may also be interested in you. They don't want to miss recruiting someone who they may eventually have to play against in the future. So when you're thinking about casting your net, if you do have one or two schools that you're focused on, expand it to include colleges that are in the conference, and that way you may create some buzz about yourself within that conference in a way that might help one coach become more interested. So this is actually how you might go through that research phase of things. And I think once you've done a little bit of that research and have some things in mind, it's especially important to talk to your coach, whether it's your Holy Trinity coach or whether it's your club coach or both, um, that would be the point that you would want to get a little bit deeper with that in terms of um, here are some schools that I'm interested in, how can we go about contacting them? And logistically, contacting them, if you are looking, this is Davidson, I picked all colleges where we had kids go last year. Um, there is a recruiting questionnaire um, where you just put in some basic information and that puts you on the list basically of the the students who the coaches are aware of are potentially interested in that that uh, that college so they ask you for information this is swimming so they would ask about times they would ask about um, they would ask some, some academic information because every coach number one thing they need to have an idea of is that they're not going to spend a lot of time recruiting somebody who isn't potentially a admission candidate academically so that, that's an important part of that. So these recruiting questionnaires can help. The other thing is on many of the end of the recruiting tabs, you'll also, also often see camps that are offered at particular schools. And if you've done some research prior of this sort, you might start to identify, well, here are some schools that seem like they might be a good fit. Maybe they're hosting a camp where there will be multiple coaches that are attending that camp and going to that camp might be a good way to start getting that feedback at the college level in addition to what you're getting from your high school and club coaches. So it's a whole different element to the choosing a college journey, um, but it's a very interesting one. I think we can all agree that every student has a kind of unique path. It doesn't usually kind of fall in your lap the way that it feels like it should when you watch it happen on TV. Um, it is really a pretty, unique process for every single student. Um, Coach Phillips, did you have anything to add in terms of how 
from the coaching standpoint in terms of students working with their coaches here? Yeah, not yeah, not, not too much more. I saw one of the slides there said be proactive. You know, it's like uh, Alison said, it's not, um, don't just sit around waiting, don't just send out one um, highlight reel to all different coaches and expect things to happen. Be proactive. You know, th these coaches who you're going to be uh, working with for maybe four years want to get to know you a little bit better. So when you send out your highlight reel, be personal on it. Don't just send out the clips of you just playing your sport. You guys are fortunate that you guys are all fantastic students. You know, present that to them on the video. Give it a couple of minute, 30 second um, introduction of yourself and you know, make eye contact with the, the camera and sell yourself. Don't just think that the little clips of you, they're looking for something different. Coaches at the college level are looking for people who they can work with. They don't want problem kids. Mm -hmm. And you guys have got that huge advantage that you're all great kids, all great students to sell it. You know, they, they, they'll come here and they'll, you know, they'll ask about you. They'll, they'll want to talk to your coaches and uh, it's all going to be good things. So make sure you're not selling yourself short and really be proactive on your, uh, you know, on your, uh, on your videos. So let me take a couple of um, minutes to talk about the ac ac academic side of things. And just one more note, please make sure that you do go ahead and send this little survey in. And that's how we all will be aware of your interest. Um, and any of us, college advisors and Coach Phillips and Coach Henderson, we all help kids through all different versions of looking for colleges. And sometimes it's within your particular area that we've even had general conversations with other students as well. But this academic piece is crucial. And this is the first slide in the presentation for a reason. And that's because, like Coach Phillips said, a college coach wants to recruit someone who's going to be able to stay at that college, manage both being an athlete and a student for four years, and graduate. That's number one on their list. Yes, they want amazing athletes, but they also want athletes who are going to be contributors in the long term for their program. And one of the big pieces of that is academics. You're at a school where you already are learning how to ba balance the academic and, and athletic pieces of things. Many of you are cramming in the right amounts of time to play your sport and do your homework and get good grades and all that kind of thing. So some of this information, you're like, yes, I'm already there, I already do that. Um, but you have to keep that in mind as a big thing that coaches are looking for just along with your, your innate talent in your sport. You can gain a scholarship by having great grades, and you can just as easily lose one. And with that being said, every school has a certain amount of money that they can give per sport that's allowed. If you're a great academic student, and I can get, you know, the school's $50,000, and the school can give you $30,000 in academic money, that means my athletic money, I only have to pay 20 to put you on a full scholarship. That means you're not paying anything, but I might not have recruited you at all if you were a C student because I would have to give you $50,000. So that's a big factor, and kids that sometimes are on that bubble of a Division three to a Division two scholarship, the academic side is what pushes them to be able to have a full scholarship rather than paying full tuition. So that goes a long way of where you're at, and schools come to recruit here because of that. One of the handouts I gave you is actually a list of sports men's and women's and it tells you the number of full athletic scholarships that they can give in a yearly basis and it's broken down by by division um, you'll see some interesting things on there for example for rowing there are only scholarships for females there really aren't there aren't athletic scholarships for male rowers and that's due to <coughs> usually title nine and the way that the programs work for that but it gives you an idea realistically number of scholarships that are purely athletic based. So what you're going to want to do, like Coach Henderson said, is go for that not just athletic scholarship. I know that's what you think that you came here to learn about, but really what we're here to talk to you about is how to get recruited as a total package student and athlete. One of the things in terms of fit, um, event, you do want to take these steps just like you would any other college to hopefully visit campus. And this is an interesting idea. You want to use the broken leg rule. If you broke your leg and could never play your sport at that college again, would you still want to be there? That's an important mindset that you're recruiting that college for yourself just as much as anything else. So thank you for coming and head on to your next session and make sure you picked up the handouts that are on the desk up here.